to Wiki Africa Hour, where Africa's Wikimedians talk to, learn from, and discuss with each other topics they choose. Each session is curated by African Wikimedians to expand Africa's open movement. Today's host is Seslas Obanyaya. Hello, viewers. I welcome you to another interesting episode of Wiki Africa Hour titled Building Communities One Photo at a Time, which is, of course, our 10th episode. I'm Cesla Subunlaya, your host. They say an image conveys a thousand words, and never more so than in Africa, where a handful of images of isolated crises displayed by global media has created, of course, damaging stereotypes and negative impressions of Africa as a continent. We have to remind ourselves of this important role of photography in free and uh, open knowledge, and not just the power of image to positively alter perspectives and add to knowledge around the world. And then around the world, the photographic contests are one of the several tactics used to build Wikimedia communities. It's a fun way to bring people together around a common goal, which is to create visibility and attract like-minded visibility. But the collection of photos and posting of events can be quite challenging for a lot of people and for various reasons. These events can actually bring about a carnage from lack of technical uh, skills, which could be one of the reasons, knowledge of licenses, or lack of knowledge of licenses, and then lack of confidence and history. Today, we have invited some very special guests who have years of experience, hands-on experience at that, in organizing and building communities by hosting events around global photography competitions. Please make welcome our special guests in the persons of Douglas Ian Scott from Wikimedia South Africa, Africa as he shares his experience in Wikilove's monument. And then there is Kandi Kokiwe from Wikilove's Africa, Botswana. And then there is also Sadiq Shahadi from Wikilove's Earth, Ghana. Wikilove's Earth is an annual international photographic competition, which is held throughout May and June organized worldwide by the Wikimedia chapters, groups, and local Wikipedia volunteers. Participants are expected to take photos of local natural heritage and scenic landscape in their countries and upload them to Wikimedia Commons, which is a repository of uh, media files. Wikilove's Monuments, on the other hand, is a public uh, photo competition around cultural heritage and cultural monuments organized by Wikimedia chapters and groups. The aim of the contest is to ask the general public, readers and users of Wikipedia, photographers, hobbyists, etc., to take pictures of cultural heritage monuments and upload them to Wikimedia Commons for use on Wikipedia and other Wikimedia projects. And then coming to Wikilove's Africa, it's an annual contest where anyone across Africa can contribute media that is relevant to their experience to Wikimedia Commons for use on Wikipedia and other project websites of the Wikimedia Foundation. The Wikilove's Africa encourages participants to contribute media, be it photograph, video, or audio, that illustrate specific themes for that year on the African continent. We'll first engage um, Douglas from Wikilove's Monument. Hello, Douglas. Hello, Celis. How are you doing? I'm fine. I'm fine. Good to have you uh, on this session. Could you please start by introducing yourself briefly? Sure. Um, so my name is Douglas Scott. I am the former president of Wikimedia South Africa, and now I'm just a, a humble board member of the Wikimedia South Africa chapter. I was also the lead organizer uh, for Wikilove's Monuments in 2013, uh, 14 and 15, and I was one of the uh, main organizers for the 2012 Wiki Loves Monuments. And in my day job, I am a criminologist. I, I study crime. 
Interesting. And I'm based in Cape Town, South Africa. Okay. Uh, for today, we won't be asking about the crime. We'll be asking about Wiki Loves Monument. <laughs> Wiki has always looked um, to get as many contexts of photography as possible. How did Wiki Loves Monument make it into the scene? What's the philosophy behind Wiki Loves Monument? So um, I'll start off with why uh, Wiki Loves Monuments was done by Wikimedia South Africa. Um, it was the very first activity that Wikimedia South Africa did. And at the time that Wikimedia South Africa was founded in 2012, um, the chapter was looking for something to do. And Wiki Loves Monuments seemed like a really good fit for the chapter to do as our first project. So that's how we landed up doing it, um, sort of a nice activity to rally the South African Wikipedia community around. The philosophy behind Wiki Loves Monuments is to encourage members of the public to take photographs of monuments and heritage sites and upload them to Commons so that they can be used on Wikipedia. Um, and this achieves two things, one of which is increases the number of photographs to illustrate Wikipedia articles. And the other thing is it encourages people to participate in editing and contributing to Wikipedia and Commons and makes people more aware of what Commons is about, um, sort of this open copyright license and that anyone can join, anyone can submit photographs for public use. Thank you for that um, introduction to how you guys got involved in the first place uh, with Wikilogs Monument. And then Wikilogs Monument has been around since uh, 2010. What can you say about the impact uh, from then to now? So the impact in different countries uh, sort of varies quite a lot. I know that uh, overall, um, the impact Wiki Loves Monuments has been large. I mean, hundreds of thousands of images. I, I don't have the number on me right now, but hundreds of thousands of images have been submitted over the years um, to Wiki Loves Monuments internationally. And these have done a lot to help illustrate Wikipedia, thousands of Wikipedia articles. Um, I can say that in South Africa, the um, impact of Wiki Loves Monuments has been two, twofold. It's had two really big impacts. Um, well, the first one is, is that um, over 12,690 um, photographs have been submitted over the sort of four years that Wiki Loves Monuments has run in South Africa. It was run in 2012, 13, 14, and 15. And in those years, like I said, uh, 12,690 images have been submitted. And those have done a lot to help illustrate South African Wikipedia articles in many different languages. So that's the first impact that Wiki Loves Monuments has had in South Africa. The second impact has been sort of a longer lasting and which probably have a much longer lasting effect, uh, assuming we're successful. And that has been, it has encouraged Wikimedia South Africa to participate in uh, the copyright, the reforming of copyright law in South Africa. Uh, and we only embarked on this um, uh, mission to help reform copyright law in South Africa because we realized that we were not allowed to uh, take photographs and share them over the internet of all types of monuments. Um, recently built monuments, according to South African law, we could not share those photographs over the internet because it was a violation of copyright law because we do not have something called freedom of panorama in south africa and so that the wiki loves monuments made us aware of freedom of panorama and how it, important it is and why we need it in south africa and it uh, started us on this uh, long um, quest to get freedom of panorama into south african law and i'm happy to say that in the the draft, the, the bill, the current bill that's been passed through both houses of parliament, um, that it has freedom of panorama in it. And we're just waiting for the bill to be enacted into law. And then we will have freedom of panorama in South Africa. So fingers crossed, uh, one of the big legacies of Wiki Loves Monuments in South Africa will be um, changing South African copyright law so that uh, we get freedom panorama in the country and we can take pictures of all types of monuments no matter when they are built, because at the moment we can't um, take pictures of monuments that uh, celebrate the struggle against apartheid, for example, in South Africa, because of the way the law currently is written, and we want to change that. 
Wow, I, I didn't know we had uh, legislators amongst uh, Wikimedians in South Africa. But <laughs> good, good to, to share that uh, very interesting gist about how far you pull are going to make sure that uh, the freedom of panorama is, of course, uh, effective in South Africa. Kudos to the Wikimedia South Africa. And then uh, generally, Africa, uh, of course, like we know, has uh, 54 countries littered with cultural monuments. You've mentioned that um, some of the monuments, like the recent ones, that you're not allowed to maybe take a photograph. But one could say that Wikilove Monument isn't really doing great numbers on the African continent generally. Throughout the, ten, the, the years of our participation, Cameroon has, of course, 677 contributions so far, Guinea 70, and Kenya was on 194, Rwanda is on 320, Sudan 23. Tanzania is on 242 and Zimbabwe 67. Even the Africa Wikimedia communities involved in Wikilove mm -hmm. Monument are not so consistent it's like you see them this year and then the next could be next two years. What do you think, aside from of course the reasons you've mentioned uh, that relates to South Africa, what do you think could be the, re the other reasons behind this sort of poor results in most of the participating African countries? So the first thing I would say is um, many great things have modest beginnings across sort of the different African countries uh, should not despair and should keep on trying. Um, it might take some time um, to build up sort of interest and excitement, but you, you'll get there eventually. Um, and so that's the first bit of advice is just to keep on trying and keep on um, raising awareness however you can. Um, the other thing is, is that um, as people, as more and more people in Africa get access to the internet and get access to uh, smartphones and other devices to add things to the internet, I think you will start seeing um, participation increase across Africa. Uh, but that'll also take time. So um, don't, my, my main advice is don't lose encouragement, keep on going. It will change eventually. I can't say when, but I'm pretty confident that it, it will become a, a great success um, in the future. Okay. Um, it would be nice seeing those numbers go up everywhere, not just uh, South Africa having over 10,000. And Thank I think you. another country that was doing relatively good was uh, Egypt. Hmm. There are some practical things, though, that organizers of Wiki Loves Monuments can do to increase participation. Um, the, the first one is just let the local media know um, about a month or, or two before Wiki Loves Monuments start. Uh, mm -hmm. Prepare a media pack, which has got all the information that the media will need to tell the people about Wiki Loves Monuments and why it's important. Um, and so like, you know, in the, in the month or maybe even the week before Wiki Loves Monument comes out, you send that uh, media pack to all the different sort of newspapers and other media houses out there to tell them about this wonderful thing. The second thing that can be done, um, and this is a kind of a grassroots activity, is to partner up. Find local partners um, that are interested in this type of event and whose members will likely be interested in participating. And this is something that we had some success with in South Africa. Uh, we managed to partner up with local, local photographic societies um, whose members were interested in taking photographs. Um, and we managed to partner up with um, the local heritage organizations, uh, government organizations. And they were very enthusiastic, especially in um, uh, one or two of the provinces in South Africa. And these two types of partners uh, were, I think, very important in increasing participation um, in, in Wiki Loves Monuments. There is a third thing, and that is to have it regularly um, every year, because you'll find that after a while, it'll build momentum, people will get more and more aware of it and then um, you'll get more and more participation. So those would be my, my three sort of pieces of practical advice to increasing participation and number of submissions to Wikilove's Monuments. 
thank you for, for sharing those tips, Douglas. Um, I'm sure that uh, future organizers uh, are listening and of course we'll be glad to implement these points just shared. Moving to the next question. Uh, one of the five pillars of Wikilog Monument says uh, make it local. In all your years of uh, organizing the Wikilog Monument in South Africa, what can you say about its local engagement and participation? generally yes so um we tried quite hard um especially sort of after the first two two or three two years of wiki loves monuments to encourage local participation through those grassroots uh, partnerships i talked about um with the photographic societies with local heritage institutions and then we uh, decided to take it a step further and get even more local because what we realize is that heritage spaces from small towns uh, and rural areas in South Africa were very underrepresented. And so we'd start organizing things like walkathons, uh, where on a certain day um, uh, we would walk through an area or a town and we would, as a group, and we would all take photographs of it. And then at the end of that, we would have an upload event where we would show people how to upload uh, photographs to Commons and answer any questions about that process and about um, the the fair use, uh, the the, free, the Creative Commons copyright license that they all uploaded under. Uh, and we found that to be very effective at getting sort of very targeted, very local participation. It also had the added benefit of encouraging a greater sense of community um, amongst Wikipedia editors in South Africa, especially those who attended these events. Thank you. Uh, I, for one, didn't know. I mean, we often hear edit a ton in the wiki movement. This is this is my first hearing something like walk a ton. So I, I pocketed this one for my own learning. And of course, I believe our audience, they've also uh, picked that one up. And then uh, another of the five pillars of the Wiki Love Monument says, make it easy. You have been part of the organizing um, team in South Africa in the past. How do you ensure that participants have it easy, especially those of them who are first timers and probably are not uh, Wikipedians? So that's a really good and really important question. Um, because if you don't make it easy, not many people will participate. It'll be too difficult for them and they'll just rather not participate than learn how to, you know, uh, submit stuff to, to Commons in the correct way that makes their photographs eligible. So we essentially did uh, three things. Um, the first one was we created um, infographics and sort of other media packs that explain to people very clearly what the process was, we, sort of like a flow chart. Um, you know, you start off by going to, you start by taking a photograph, here are the things to keep in mind, go to the website, submit the photograph, do it in this way, et cetera, et cetera. So nice and clear, laid out with pictures and as few words as possible. People don't like words, they like pictures. Um, the second thing we did is uh, we worked with the heritage organizations to digitize uh, all of the, or to upload all of the heritage monuments so people could find their heritage monuments easily. So in the South African competition, um, uh, we were, we strongly encourage people to photograph uh, registered monuments, um, but not many people know how to find a registered monument or what a registered monument is. So that's why this step was very important. And I shared a link in um, uh, just now of where where we uploaded that on the Wiki Loves Monument South Africa website, and we also uploaded that to Wikipedia itself as well, um, and that allowed people to find out monuments in their local area or that were close to them. The third thing we did is uh, we worked with the organizers of Wiki Loves Monuments International to adopt tools that they had developed to make uploading easy. Um, and so people could just press a button and it would take them immediately to the upload page and they would have to do as little as possible to submit their photographs. So, it's, so those those three things explain it with uh, with graphics and, and clear sort of illustrations of how to participate, 
um, make it easy to find monuments and and submit details about those monuments when submitting to the competition because that's very helpful to Wikipedia editors later on. And three, um, uh, the third one is uh, integrate um, elements into your competition page that makes it as easy as possible for people to submit their photographs at the press of a button. Okay. Uh, thank you for sharing those tips on making it easy. I, I suppose this could also um, apply to other uh, photo uh, contests in terms of organizing and getting first time to be part of it. And then Wiki Loves uh, Monument seems to also have a writing competition. How do you marry this uh, writing competition to the photo contest? What's the relationship? So there isn't really much of a connection to the writing competition and Wiki Loves Monuments. But one of the things we did do um, in the later years of Wiki Loves Monuments was we started encouraging people to um, add the photographs to Wikipedia. So we created a prize category uh, for best use on, Wiki on Wikipedia. Um, so a person could load a, a photograph to Wiki Loves Monuments in the competition someone else or the same person doesn't matter who could then go and take that photograph yes such as the photograph we see here this is one of the previous winners of, of wiki loves monuments uh, could take this photograph and use it to illustrate uh, something use it to illustrate an article on wikipedia and we would then sort of uh, go through all of the people that you know said that they participated in this process and uh, examine these edits and then give a prize according to the best use on Wikipedia. And in that way, encourage people to use it. But in terms of the writing competitions and Wiki Loves Monuments, there was uh, no, no real connection. Okay. But that doesn't mean uh, there can't for... be. Someone, someone else more innovative than us could, could integrate the two, <laughs> and that would be great. Oh, okay. Uh, you've heard it here first. They are probably looking for somebody with the best idea to collaborate with on having a proper writing competition to marry the, the, the two of them. But what you, you mentioned about uh, making use of the photo on Wikipedia is relatable, like most of us uh, have seen in, in the uh, uh, Wikipedia, wanting, uh, Wikipedia pages wanting photo uh, project. So, so, so you're then, asking how can, I'm sorry, yes. Okay. Oh, oh I was like I'm, 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 I was just uh, trying to remember that there is such a, a, a project proper that encourages people to make use of uh, photos gathered from, let's say, photo contests uh, on, on Wikipedia. It's called uh, Wikipedia Pages uh, Wanting Photos. Mm. That's right, yes. And it was, it was also one of the uh, problems we found with Wiki Loves Monuments is that people would submit lots of photographs. I mean, like thousands of photographs were submitted. We even had one person who submitted like over a thousand photographs in one year. Um, the problem was is that most of the photographs weren't being used and many of the photographs were unusable on Wikipedia. And that kind of defeated the purpose of Wiki Loves Monuments. The purpose of Wiki Loves Monuments well, one of the purposes was to um, uh, generate photographs for use in Wikipedia. Though it, it did help, however, with some of the other purposes of Wiki Loves Monuments. Um, another purpose being was that um, to monitor the, the status of monument and heritage sites in South Africa. Thank you for that um, clarity. I, I guess um, people uh, or participants should be uh, taught on how to, uh, to perhaps get um, photos of monuments that are going to be or that are encyclopedic value that could easily be featured on, on Wikipedia articles then. The last question for you, Douglas, is of course, you've mentioned um, getting the media involved in terms of trying to organize uh, locally. You've mentioned the uh, partnership with let's say a photography group you've mentioned uh, maybe digital uh, going digital with the contest by partnering with um, heritage institutions apart from these um, three points 
what are other things that maybe one must put in place in order to achieve successful outcome in organizing Wikilogs monument locally? Hmm. Um, I suppose being organized from being organized early on. So sort of making sure that you have every, all your ducks in a row, like everything organized and ready um, about at least a, at least a week, ideally a month before the event begins. So, you know, like um, all the events you're going to have during your Wiki Loves Monuments um, event sort of month, um, you, you know who you're going to contact. You've already got your partners because partners are important and that, that takes a lot of time to organize and set up and build those relationships. So definitely a month before the event, you want to have all your partners um, uh, ready and lined up. Uh, you want to have your banner adverts uh, ready to go at least a week before the event. Um, so that actually you, ideally a month before the event, because they got to go through the sort of the, the banner uh, um, system on Wikipedia. These are the ad, the Wikipedia banners advertising the competition. Um, so I suppose just overall organization, 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 organization. Um, and having having a, a good team is, is helpful for that. But a lot of the best Wiki Loves Monuments events are also organized just by one person on their own without a team. Um, so if you don't have a team, don't be don't be worried, don't be put off. One person can organize the whole thing very well as well. Nice. Uh, thank you so much for those tips. It means even if you have a team, make sure you're organized. And even if you're going solo, make sure you're organized too. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Douglas, for answering uh, the questions. Uh, and hopefully uh, someone amongst the audience will have a question or two for you during the Q&A session. Now we Thank move you. on to Candy Kofi. You're welcome. Hello, Candy. Hi, Cecilus. <laughs> you are welcome to this yep. other side of events. Wow. So you, <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, I think you should start by maybe making a brief introduction of yourself. All right, um, I'll say, well, how can I say it? I'll say, my name is Candy Trisha Koshiwe. I'm a project coordinator with Wiki Loves um, Africa here in Botswana. I'm also a project facilitator with Wiki Loves Women. Um, yeah, so pretty much I started my journey um, with Wikipedia a long time ago. I think it was 2013 where I was a long term editor and fast forward to 2019. That's when I started contributing to Wiki Loves Africa. Hence, we're here. Yeah. Now I'm on your platform. I'm so excited. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Our platform, you mean to say. <laughs> Wiki Loves Africa 2022 for the contest has just launched under the theme uh, Health and Awareness as of 15th February. What is the whole philosophy behind Wiki Loves Africa? Um, I would say my philosophy behind Wiki Loves Africa, it's more of allowing or enabling, let me say, enabling Africans to narrate their own story and um, decolonizing the single story narrative of what's what Africa is perceived to be. Hence, we have to write our own stories. That is through pictures, um, increasing visibility through these pictures. And hence, um, I believe like Wiki Loves Africa has created that platform for us to do it. I didn't know like I could create, um, add um, my pictures. Hence, Wiki Loves Africa has kind of like created that platform for me to know that I can contribute in a global knowledge platform like um, Wikipedia to add my stories and create more content co concerning that. So I'm very happy that we are writing our story through Wiki Loves Africa. Yeah. Yes, they absolutely need to be part of your storytelling can mm -hmm. never be uh, overemphasized. If not, somebody somewhere will tell you he discovered a village before you. <laughs> and then <laughs> Botswana has always uh, been part of Wikilabs Africa since uh, 2019, though mm -hmm. there is no established Wikimedia affiliate, no user group in Botswana to at least yeah. provide the direct um, structural backbone or support. 
How yeah. do you manage to pull this off every year since 2019? Yeah, um, that is a very great question to ask. I feel like before we are a user group, it's very exciting if we could become a user group. Yes, that's what we're fighting for. Um, well, we are headed that way. But I feel like before being a user group, we have to be a community and we are a group of contributors. Hence, I have um, a number of few people who are very um, passionate about this open movement. So we are driven by that, like contributing and making, making an impact towards this. Hence, um, we pretty much make our, our um, events through like organizing and kind of like delegating work and sharing, being having the teamwork spirit and kind of like dividing work on how we could make our Wiki Loves Africa events successful. Yeah, so with that kind of spirit, I feel we are on the right direction. We are individuals first and um, being individuals, we are a community and a group. With a, as a team, we are able to make um, this uh, more better and have a great impact as a user group going forward. So it's about creating that kind of bond and relationship. Yeah. Hmm. It's good <laughs> to know you 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 have the Ubuntu spirit uh, yeah. <laughs> pushing you forward. Very big. Down there. <laughs> yes. Hopefully, uh, we we hope you you guys get to have a proper uh, user group or Wikimedia Africa group. Thing there. Is I I, I I believe that would uh, push things higher for you guys. And then yeah. we, we understand that there are different levels of engagement in the Wikilabs Africa. Uh, we understand yeah. there is the pre-contest uh, level of engagement, and then there is the contest proper, and then there is the post-contest level of engagement. Could you please yeah. explain these various uh, levels of engagement to us? I would say um, the engagements are quite... That is a broad way. I can explain it in a very broad way. Um, Pre-contest, we usually have, um, thank God for Isla and Florence, we usually have office hour where they train us what Wiki Loves Africa and kind of like the communication skills that we should use when kind of like narrating these stories, well, not stories, but sorry, these trainings to our communities. Hence, I would say the pre-contest, before your contest, you have to kind of like, have a grant proposal, um, also have it approved, um, kind of like do your planning of how you are going to have your event um, done. And then um, during the contest, you ha also have to look like, what do you want to achieve? Thank you, Ayla, for sharing that. This was our previous um, Wiki Loves um, Africa um, contest last year, which was health and wellness. This year, it's whole, uh, home and habitat. So during the contest, for you to kind of like maximize and get the best impact or outcome, you have to kind of like um, decide what you're going to do. So I usually think around um, what um, Douglas said, you have to do like photo walks or walkathon. That is a great word that I learned also yeah. today. Um, and also you have to think about um, kind of like having that constant uh, momentum or engagement with your um, participants, make sure you have regular check-ins, make sure you have a creative, kind of like a comfortable space to communicate with your participants, make sure you have that kind of um, relationship, I would say, to make them safe, feel safe and comfortable to ask you questions on how they can contribute to this um, com um, open movement. So, yeah, I would say the post ones after doing um, Wiki Loves Africa, we usually have um, contests like the Issa Tool campaign, which is normally hosted after um, Wiki Loves Africa. And we also have um, Wikipedia wanting pictures. So this kind of like helps to illustrate the African narrative better to share our stories with pictures and also kind of like have that visual narrative, um, which helps. So yeah, I would say those are kind of like the 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 pre and contest and kind of like post events that we do during um um Wiki Loves Africa. It's very, very broad to be honest. Yeah. Thank you for narrowing those down. I mean that, <laughs> that was a, a whole lot. Yes, that was a whole lot. 
and, yeah. and then for a location, let's say someone amongst our audience is in a location where there is no Wikimedia affiliate or a recognized user group. What does it take to organize Wikilove's Africa at the local level? Aside, of course, the teamwork, let's say in organogram, who and what should be on ground or part of the group or the team to make sure we have a maybe make sure one has a successful run at it. Um, apart from having, well, I, I wouldn't say I can work without a team. I need the team, but they should be that crucial, um, I would say coordinator to kind of like lead, take lead on what, what should happen. So as for me, from my experience, as, um, we have a very small community here, I usually, I'm that person who kind of like, um, takes lead of what kind of activities we're doing um with the mentorship definitely so you can't pretty much do everything by yourself um so usually we have office hours with as i said with isla and florence um so with that kind of mentorship it helps and we also have a great network with um, wiki loves africa we also have a telegram group where we usually can go and ask questions if we ever feel like we don't understand something. So there's that kind of like um, um, communication level where we know we are not alone. We're doing this as a team. We're doing this as um, as a community. So I can't really say I can be an island doing this. Yes. So I'm very um, comfortable to say we work as a team and that has been working ever since, yeah. Nice. So one must have a team mm -hmm. and at least make sure person or uh, maybe get uh, a, a mentorship from international Definitely. organizers. Yeah. Sure. And then the last question for you is, uh, I understand that this year's international prizes are for Wiki Loves Africa 2022, they are more juicy than ever. <laughs> what changed in these prizes? I um I'm very excited about the 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 prizes. They are really really um inter well they are really juicy I must say. <laughs> so I would say because Wiki Loves Africa has been around correct me if I'm wrong I think 9 years this is the ninth year. So with that being said we have grown we have done a lot of impact and what's the best way to celebrate and give back to people who um, tirelessly contribute to this um, initiative and they are um, very passionate about sharing. So definitely it's, it's I would say people who share, um, who take out time to kind of, to contribute to sharing free accessible knowledge to the community. That is pretty much priceless to have those kind of volunteers. So the, pr the prizes, I think it's a way of giving back to the community and being grateful for the quality work they've been giving. Um, so hence, as we grow, the, the, the prizes are getting better and juicier. So that is pretty much exciting, I must say. So I'm happy for that. Um, yeah. Thank you, Candy, for sharing. And for those of you who are guessing, I can put some figures onto that for you. The first Please. prize this year is, is going away with $2,000. The wow. second international prize is going away with 1500 And the third, uh, that's $1,000. And then there is a cultural um, specific prize for anybody who depicts the team or illustrates the team culturally or traditionally. That's also um, recognized for $750. Yes, that's the, the price for that. And the best quality video this year will be getting $1,000. And then there is a special collection price for those who are able to put together a collection of um, photos that, of course, tell the home and habitat um, story of Africa. There is a $750 uh, cash price for that one. So you cannot miss out in any of these prizes. So make sure you actually participate in this year's Wiki Loves Africa. 
Thank you so much, Kanzi, uh, for answering to these questions. Hopefully you, there will be oh, the pleasure is mine. Hopefully there will be questions for you during the Q and A session. We move on to um, Sadiq from Wiki Loves Earth. Hello, Sadiq. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear us? <laughs> yeah, good. I know Ola in the Bani. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Could you please uh, introduce yourself briefly, Sadiq? Okay, sure. Um, my name is Sadiq Shahadu. I am based in Tamale, Ghana, and uh, currently serving as the executive director for the Dagbani Wikimedians User Group. I am also a West Africa language coordinator for art and feminism. And um, yeah, I'm the country coordinator for Wikilabs Folklore uh, 2021. And I've organized this would be my second time organizing with the last um at we the first one was yeah we organized wiki last folklore uh in Tamale for the first time in 2021 um, that last year. Yeah, that's me. Okay, but this year you are organizing the wiki loves earth. Yes, yeah. That's good to know. And then the, the founders of the Wiki Love Earth, and those of you who perhaps make our time to organize it locally, you surely have your reasons for that. What's the idea behind uh, Wiki Love Earth? Why is it important? Yeah, so Wiki Love Earth, um, I think, it started in uh, Ghana uh, in 2019, but the main event started in Ukraine. Um, we know there's currently some you know issues in Ukraine. Um, my heart goes to all those who have lost their lives and their families. Um, so it started in Ukraine in 2013 as a local um, contest and then became international in 2014 that um, many uh, countries participated. And since then, Wiki Loves Earth has been, um, many countries have um, organized Wiki Loves um, Earth, including Ghana. But for Ghana, this should be our third time organizing Wiki Loves um, Earth. And the reason why we organize Wiki Loves Earth, specifically in Ghana, is because of the kind of uh, impact it has on Wikimedia projects relating to our country, like Ghana. Um, as you may be aware, Wiki Loves um, Earth focuses on landscape and um, cultural heritage sites. And we have so much of these uh, in Ghana, all over the country. We have a lot of beautiful uh, parks, gardens, and scenic um, scene, um, places that you can you know capture and add it to the contest and the main reason why we are doing this is to help um, contribute images to um, wikipedia articles and other wikimedia projects like wikidata and several other wiki programs so wiki labs um, it is very important to us because it will help us to be able to document things that many people don't know about ghana in relation to it and uh, natural landscape yeah. thank you for that uh, introduction and uh, giving us the overview of uh, wiki loves earth whenever i visit the wiki loves earth campaign pages i can't help but always notice there is this uh, list of protected areas beside each uh, country landing uh, landing page please explain the content of such pages listed uh, list of other areas that's a good question thank you for asking that um the protected areas or sites are the places that are being protected by the country or regional level for example the in ghana or in tamil we have the parks and garden which is currently being protected by the government we have the Moli national park that is also being protected by the government there are a lot of wildlife um, reservations and uh, um, cultural heritage sites that are being protected by the country. So um, protected sites simply means um, sites that are being protected by the government or the local authority. Okay. But allow me to further ask, why are these sites being protected? Yeah, so it is important to protect such sites because um, for example, the Moli National Park is one of the biggest um, wildlife reservations in West Africa. And we have so many um, uses. Uh, there's so much uh, to drive from the site. For example, we have many people going there as tourists, 
people go there to learn more about natural landscape. They learn about different kinds of plants or species of animals that are found in Africa. Um, when you go there, you'll be able to know the different species of uh, various animals and plants that you never thought exist in Ghana. So there's the need for the country or the local authority to protect these sites because um, there's danger as many people would easily troop to these areas and like kill animals that are being protected. If it's not well protected, there are also people who like um, cut down trees or just um, destroy the natural landscape. Um, you know, without these protections, we would not have these um, heritage sites in order to generate uh, income for the country as tourist sites. So it is important for us to protect these sites and that's why these sites are being protected. Oh, that makes absolute sense. So those of us who love game, we don't go there hunting. Thank you for that explanation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one of the rules for which he loves Earth participants, it, it says submission must be self-taking and self-uploaded mm -hmm. i mean this is unlike let's say wiki loves africa where perhaps you could upload someone else's uh, shots as long as you state that you are not the one who took it you mm -hmm. put the person as the author mm -hmm. are there particular reasons for this particular rule that submission must be self-taken and self-uploaded please enlighten us yeah thank you so much um douglas in his earlier submission spoke a lot about copyright restrictions and how um, it affects these uh, Wikilabs. It's not only about Wikilabs Monument. There are other uh, Wikilabs, as he mentioned, the Wikilabs Africa, Wikilabs Earth, Wikilabs Folklore, and so on. Now we have Wikilabs Butterflies. <laughs> so um, the reason is that people should be able to take these pictures by themselves. For example, if I have a camera and I want to participate in the contest, instead of taking pictures that are already uploaded on social media or other platforms, it is not advisable to do that. You should be able to take that picture by yourself with your own camera or um, somebody, someone else takes your camera to take that picture and you still have copyright um, to that picture. So this does not violate copyright, uh, um, the Creative Commons licenses laws that are governing the uh, contest, the uh, copyright violations with regards to using other people's work. There are people who just go on to the internet and start using um, picking people's um, works like pictures and using them anyhow they want. We don't use that for Wikilabs um, Wiki um, Ed because it violates in the individual's uh, copyright. And we allow people to be able to use pictures that they take themselves so that other people can use them or reuse them on Wikimedia projects. So it is important to take it by yourself and you should upload it by yourself. And to be able to do that, you first of all need to create an account on Wikimedia Commons before you can participate in the contest. Okay, thank you for sharing the reason behind that particular rule of self-taking and self-upload. Over the years, uh, the participation from the African community in terms of the Wikilot Earth has been very, very low. Isn't Africa earthly enough to be part of Wikilabs Earth? What could be the reason for this low turnout from the African communities? Yeah, just like um, many other uh, problems we face in the Wikimedia ecospace, uh, Wikilabs um, Earth is also one of the, this is still one of the challenges we face when uh, organizing Wikilabs Earth and other Wikilabs programs. Um, the reason could be because uh, many people do not, um, have the self, like the volunteerism spirit, uh, just like contributing to Wikipedia pro um, projects, like writing articles on Wikipedia. It takes um, people who have the um, zeal to contribute knowledge that other people can benefit from. You know, it's the same way. So if you are a photographer, you have the ability to move around and take pictures and upload it to Wikimedia Commons or Wikilabs Earth. If you are not like self-motivated enough, <laughs> there's no need for you. And one of the reasons I always say is because many people or volunteers in Africa generally do not have a lot of um, reasons why they don't participate. My little uh, search 
shows that many people, many of these people do not have, um, you know, they are not um, uh, employed. So to be able to get the drive to contribute to these um, volunteer projects, it's kind of like difficult for them. Um, yeah, so that is one of the reasons why. The other reason could be because of access, um, lack of access to these um, sites. Some of the sites, even though are well protected, but are not friendly um, to be able to get access to them. If you want to visit a, a place like the Moli National Park, uh, where it is located, it's very far away from, um, you know, the main cities. It's mostly like in the far away um, um, villages. So to be able to access those places, you need to take long buses. And that is where you can get all the, um, the right um, pictures for the contest. You have thousands of uh, animals and different kinds of plants and, um, you know, species of bears in the uh, um, forest. But financial uh, challenges are the reason why people cannot go there to access them. Sometimes, to um, even though these are public institutions or, or um, places that uh, everybody can visit, uh, sometimes you need to go through some process to be able to access them. Sometimes you go and they ask you to pay some money because they don't know the reason why you are doing that project. Sometimes it's very difficult for them to understand that we are taking these pictures to promote um, Ghana or count the country. So they think maybe you go there to take pictures and uh, make commercial gains from the, uh, those pictures that you take. So that is the reason why sometimes people get discouraged to participate. I've participated in other um, Wikilabs programs where we are denied access to uh, monumental sites or heritage sites because uh, we are not able to uh, you know, produce um, ID cards to say that, okay, we are coming from this organization and we have uh, support from this organization. We have this letter from this uh, institution. If you go like that, you are not able, they will not give you access to this site. So it makes it very difficult for people to participate. Other than that, um, I feel uh, we have a lot of beautiful uh, scenic sites. We have uh, wonderful reservations in Africa. Um, you know, we should be able to grow uh, in participation and also encourage more um, countries to participate. Currently, we don't have a lot of countries participating in Wikilabs Africa, um, Wikilabs Ed. Interesting, interesting. Uh, this uh, sort of uh, reminds me of uh, what someone Hello. Looks like we lost Cessless. Hi, everyone. Apologies for that. Uh, please bear with us. Um, Ceslaus and um, is on his way back. There seemed to have been a, a little glitch in the system. Um, mm. Just to give us a few minutes and we will be back with you. Sadiq, um, can you just walk us through like how how you choose the um, the jury in um, in Ghana separate to the how's the jury process and the local jury process separate to the international process in Ghana? Um, yes, if you sure. can let us know about that. Thank you, Ayla. Yeah, so um, because the contest is an international competition, we have um, several countries participating. So in order for us to qualify to the international level, we need to have a local jury that would select the best photos from Ghana. So um, usually we uh, engage um, photographers, like professional photographers who uh, are available to you know, volunteer their time to review these um, submissions. So for jury, jury, we look at, aside from the community, like experienced photographers or participants, we blend uh, a mixture of Wikimedians and also professional photographers who, whether they have contributed to Wikimedia uh, Commons or not, we are able to use them as jury. So the process is very simple, local volunteers and professional photographers. Thank you, uh, Sadiq, for sharing the jury process with us. And to actually uh, wrap up with the questions we have for you, uh, Ghana always seems to find a way 
to rise to the Wikilove Earth occasion. How many times has Wikilove Earth been hosted in Ghana? What and what do you do to ensure you have a smooth run whenever you, you, you have to organize it locally? Thank you, Cecilus. Um, <clears throat> there, one of the things that we have um, done over the years is to work with com different communities. Um, Wiki Labs Earth is organized by different communities and anybody from anywhere within the country can participate. So we don't restrict it to a certain community, like a user group. Even at the international level, we don't have like specific uh, team or founders who run Wiki Labs Earth, even though we have main organizers who always support everyone who participates in the contest. But we, restrict, we, we, we don't restrict it to a certain community or level of uh, expertise. Anybody from anywhere can participate, whether you are a professional photographer or an amateur photographer or just a, uh, a Wikipedia uh, contributor. People can participate with their fo mobile phones. Now we have high quality phones that we can use to take pic quality pictures and use it um, for Wikimedia projects. Um, the reason why we keep organizing it is that um, or how we are able to you know get more people to participate is we don't restrict people as i mentioned we also allow um we we, we plan ahead usually we take uh, at least one month to be able to plan and get the central uh, notice banner running so that everyone from anywhere would be able to see the uh, adverts on their uh, wikimedia um, platforms like local wikis and main uh, wikis so it is open and this allows more people to participate if it's open yeah. thank you thank you for that uh, insight it looks like this uh, one month um, ample time in advance is actually a thing to go by i mean douglas has mentioned this now you're mentioning it so i i really hope our future organizers of whichever for the contest are actually taking it. But then the other question you, you left out is how many times has Wikilabs Earth happened in Ghana? Okay, so this is the 2022 will be the third time. The first one was in 2019, which was organized in the southern part of Ghana by uh, some community members and volunteers in the south. Um, last year, 2021, we organized that in the northern part of Ghana for the first time. So this will be the third time uh, Wikilabs Earth has been organized in the in Ghana. That's interesting. I mean, the rest of the African community should really uh, look into your, your notes of operation over the years. Thank you so much, uh, Sadi. That was quite uh, an insight on the Wikilops, or into the Wikilops Earth world. Hopefully someone amongst the community or audience would have a question for you. And now we, we move on to the Q&A session. If you have any question for our guests, this will be the time to perhaps ask so we can have them provide answers. Haliru was saying, I wish to know more. Haliru, if you're listening, what do you need to know more about? I wish to learn more. I guess Haliru is not here. Um, that being said, in the absence of uh, no questions, uh, we move on to the news segment for today. Uh, Kandi, I know you're on the other side of things today, but it would really be nice if you could help me out uh, in giving the news updates. Hello, Kandi. Hi, Cesles. Is that Happy a yes? Help. Definitely. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. So I will go first. Uh, we would like to congratulate the Wikimedia community Zagu Rwanda on their official recognition as an athlete by the Wikimedia Foundation. 
this goes a long way to say that the work that we put in that they don't go unnoticed all right um wikilabs africa 2022 themed home and habitat has launched in eight, um 15 on the 15th of feb 2022 um yeah i you can visit our wiki in africa news for the link yes newsroom yes the new global conversations event on regional and thematic hubs is planned for 12th march you would be able to find the link in the newsroom session of the wiki africa hour meta page to get more details the community development team is looking for feedback about the responsibilities of leadership development um, task force. Um, so to give your feedback, definitely um, visit the newsroom link to get that, yeah. And Wikilove's Folklore 2022 contest uh, has extended its deadline to 15th March, 2022. To participate, you will be able to get the link in the Wiki Africa Hour newsroom. Um, March is Women's Rights Women's Rights Month. Car um, car kindly participate in all the many initi initiatives proposed by Wikimedia communities. There's a global portal where all the activities you can visit to organize. To organize an event are listed so please join in to know more about women rights month and the um how you can contribute towards that to join the portal yeah open education week 2022 is happening from 7th to 11th march 2022 you can collaborate with open educators host an activity with your local community or share an open education resources or resource to get the link to do this or know more about this visit the wiki africa our newsroom um creative commons open culture remix art contest 2022 is on submission deadline is on april 30th there are cash prizes to be won on to you Cesles. For the Wikilove's Africa 2022 video, the Wikilove's Africa International team wants an audio recording from community members saying home and habitat. Please send your audio recording to social at wikiinafrica.org before the end of today, preferably. The International Month of Francophone Contribution runs um, from the 1st to the 30th of March 2022. Join the Telegram group. Um, definitely, you can see the link on our Wiki in Africa um, newsroom to join that um, group if you plan to organize any event towards that. Yeah. You can join the research team at the Wikimedia Foundation for their monthly office hours on next week, Tuesday, which is 1st of March at 12 p.m. UTC, between 12 p.m. UTC to 1 p.m. Great. And then the Wikimania 2022 core organizing team has been unveiled. Um, this year, core organizing team members are An Anton, um, sorry for the pronunciation, Prostik from Ukraine, um, Anthony um, from Tanzania, Evelyn from Uruguay, and Husmedin from um, Turkey. Tunisia? from uh, yes 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 tunisia and um david from saint david um from Me mexico and richard from usa sandra from uganda and um venus from hong kong so to get more insight about that team the core team that has joined um definitely visit our um wiki in africa newsroom to get more insights yeah you, you left behind Karede Yusuf from Nigeria, who is also part of the co-organizing team. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Thank you. And then yeah, the and first, uh, anytime. 
Yes. <laughs> the first state of the internet language report has been released. You can find the link to this uh, report in the Wiki Africa Hour newsroom on Meta. Great. Um, we at Wiki in Africa, we are able to launch and run the Wiki in Africa Hour 2021 um with the help of andrew lee um and wikipedia weekly stream yard platform so we are very much grateful for this kind of gesture in 2022 we decided to move on to our own pre premium stream yard um, platform hence we have great news we would like to encourage the community that needs such a platform like stream yard um to reach out to us if you would like to um also use this platform Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Candy. And you can view all the news updates in the newsroom section on the Wiki Africa Hour Meta page. Building communities one photo at a time isn't a small task. However, with guidance from those who have done it in the past, those who have hands on experience, and those who are still doing it, one could achieve successful outcomes. Thank you, Douglas Scott. Uh, thank you, Candy Kohiwe and Sadiq Shahadu for making our time to share your knowledge and experience with us today. On behalf of the Wiki in Africa team, we thank everyone uh, for showing up. And uh, um, I remain your host, Sesla uh, Osobunaya, myself and Candy, who helps me with the news today, as usual. We wish you a very fun weekend. Yes, thank you so this much. This episode um, of Wiki Africa Hour was hosted by Seslaus Obanaya. Let us know what topics you want to discuss and join us next month on the same channels. Subscribe to the Wiki in Africa YouTube channel and follow Wiki Africa on social media.